Hello, good day everyone. For today's video is all about the environmental analysis. It is the next major part or section of the business plan after the executive summary. Environmental analysis is a strategic tool that helps determine the external and internal factors affecting the performance of your business. Factors may be political, economic, social, or technological in nature. This consists of at least 20 pages. Yes, minimum of 20 pages, but the comforting part here is, I guess, 70% of this section is composed of graphical representations, tables, and computations. Prob probably that's 13 to 14 pages. And environmental analysis is considered as the heart of the business plan. So here we can see the inner characteristics of your future business venture. These are the parts of your business plan. We have trend in the industry, global analysis, societal analysis or PESL analysis, industrial analysis or SWOT analysis, and under consumer analysis we have market segmentation and segmentation matrix for competitor analysis we have competitive matrix and we have under market forecast we have the demand and supply forecast second to the last is market position and the last part of your business plan or environmental analysis is marketing strategy for this lesson uh, until our topic or our the part that will be discussed is until competitor analysis. So probably on Friday, market forecast, market position, and marketing strategy will be posted. Now, let's proceed to the first part of your environmental analysis. Under the trends in the industry, we have global analysis, societal analysis, and industrial analysis. Global analysis is a description of the global business situation to provide enough knowledge about the global perspective or horizon of your business. Since we know, as an entrepreneur, our business must be a wealth-creating venture. Dili lang kita ang maka-benefit, kita nga business person, uh, pati our community, society, and in the long run, hopefully, the economy will benefit locally and globally. In this part, the trend in the global market is important because it is the result of what happened in the past. Through that, you can identify possible business ideas that may happen in the future and take note. Investors are more interested in what will happen in the future. So, the expected output for this global analysis is you will make a rationale on the future trend or opportunities of your business. It should be based on the existing facts, research, or survey. So, dapat mangita ka og mga reference no online and don't forget to acknowledge the source. By the way, class, um, please check performance task B3, no? I have their simple instruction of what to do in each part of the environmental analysis. And on our last style, I have different sites or reference para additional information about doing your task, which is the environmental analysis. Moving on to societal analysis, here you are going to provide how the environment forces affect the proposed business and how great their effects are. And the expected output is the PISTEL or PISEL analysis. PISEL stands for political, economic, social, technological, legal, and environmental forces. I guess sample output nga naka-attach sa LMS is here sa PESEL analysis portrait siya. Kumbaga, kanis sila 
na asa one row. So, please follow this template nga naka-landscape lang, no? Or by co one column ang uh, political, economic, up to environmental analysis. Now, in this part, what will you do? Um, sayon ra siya because you will just answer these following questions. For political forces, what government policies or political groups should be beneficial or detrimental to our success? Is the political environment stable or likely to change? And in terms of economic forces, what economic factors will impact on us moving forward? Does the current economic performance affect us? How does each economic factor impact our pricing, revenues, and costs? For social forces, how do our consumers' values and beliefs impact on their buying habits? How does human behavior or cultural trends play a role in our business? For technological forces, what innovations and technological advancements are available or on the horizon? And how might uh, they affect our operation? Legal forces, what regulations and laws apply to our business? Uh, do they help or hinder our business? Do we understand the laws across all our markets? And the last forces is environmental. How does our physical environment affect us and vice versa? What are the effects of climate, weather, or geographical location? Are we prepared for future environmental target. Please check your LMS. I have there another reference or link na naka-attach na, na ay detailed explanation about pestel analysis and examples. But also, I have here example of pestel analysis of the famous no or known companies. We have Adidas, uh, Apple, Uber, and Coca-Cola. So, these are the pestle analysis. Uber class kay I'm not sure murag face out na ata na sila karon no before pandemic kay ni click naman ang Grab. No murag may siya Grab ang Uber. And I have here another example, Apple and Coca-Cola. For sure familiar mo ani. The last part of Trends in the industry is industrial analysis. Your expected output is the SWOT analysis. SWOT means your uh, the strength, weakness, opportunities, and threat of your business. And it should have, or it involves three important related tasks. These are conducting a critical evaluation of the forces in the industry that affect the proposed business, evaluating the probable position of your business in the industry, and determining the most appropriate strategy that may be adopted by the proposed business. Basel and SWOT analysis is in table format. Now, SWOT analysis, again, SWOT stands for the strength, weakness, opportunities, and threats of your business. On the first column of the SWOT analysis table, you will put the strength. Lamang ni mo sa imuhang competitor. So, you should put things you, uh, your company does well, qualities that separate you from your competitors, internal resources such as skilled, knowledge, uh, knowledgeable staff, tangible assets such as intellectual property, uh, capital, proprietary, technologies, uh, etc. Second column is weakness. Kahinaan, tanang tao na aju weakness, no? Even the top one company na aju boy weakness. Now, here in the second column, you will put the things your company lacks, uh, things your competitors do better than you, resources, limitations, and unclear, unique selling propositions. On the third column, we have opportunities. You need to provide the undeserved markets for specific products, few competitors in your area, emerging need for your product 
products or services and press or media coverage of your company and on the last column is the threats of your business these are the emerging competitors changing regulatory environment negative press or media coverage and changing customer attitudes toward your company for SWOT analysis examples, please check the your LMS no na attached dito sa week 7 nga tile. Next part is consumer analysis. Consumer, they are the one who consume ni gamit sa product while customer kay they are the one who purchase the product na may nipalit pero dili sila ang nigamit no. Pwede sila magreseller. Now, why there is a need for the entrepreneur to clearly identify and define the customers of his or her proposed business venture? The answer is, it is because not all will become customers of the business venture. We need to identify our target customer. Para kabauta, unsay direction sa atong marketing strategy, sa ato ang i-provide nga um, product po nila. Under consumer analysis is market segmentation. It is an entrepreneurial marketing strategy designed primarily to divide the market into small segments with distinct needs, characteristics, or behavior. The commonly used methods for segmenting the market are geographic segmentation. So, these are the climate, uh, dominant ethnic group, culture, density, classification of the geographical unit. Second one is demographic segmentation. These are the gender, female or male, age, range, income, occupation, education, religion, ethnic group, and family size. Third one is psychological segmentation no needs wants attitude social class personality traits knowledge and awareness brand concept and lifestyle the fourth one is behavioral segmentation we have perceptions knowledge reactions benefits loyalty and responses for your um, market segmentation output Focus lang ta sa demographic segmentation, specifically sa age range. Why? Maglisod, um, other methods is lisod kay siya i-gather ang data no, through online. Wherein, sa age part man god, so let's say, sa Cebu City ni mo ang, Cebu City ang location sa inyong business, makita man ta na may site sa uh, PSA, Pilak, uh, Pilay Population sa Cebu City, niya o ilahang age range, Pilakabuok ang... Uh, um, citizen nga uh, age, ang age is 13 to 17. So, kana lang sa ato. But, if dili yun siya applicable or kumbaga ganahan yun mo, glisod gamay, no challenge nga part, you can use other. Pwede mo gender, female, female and male, available raman sa na siya sa PSA. But here, ang akong ihata nga example kay age range rasya sa kumbaga uh, possible customers ni mo in that certain location sa imuhang business. But take note, by the way, uh, we have here points to consider in segmentation. First one is accessib accessibility of the market segment, size of the market segment, and the distinction of the market segment. So I have here example, let's take ni, uh, location ni, uh, population ni sa Cebu City. So, 35%, ang edad kay 18 to 23 13 to 17 is um, 10 percent tra ang uh, mga nagpuyo sa Cebu City ranging uh, range sa age kay 24 to 30 kay 27 percent tra yeah, 13 percent for for 31 to 39 and uh, the last one is 40 to 45 we have 15 percent so magdepende na no kung unsay range na inyong hanggamiton sa available rapod sa PSA the second part under consumer analysis is segmentation matrix. The segmentation process is easily facilitated through the use of the segmentation matrix. So, expected output is the table, this table. 
the, in the first column is the data according sa present in the pie graph katong pie graph ganiha uh, diin to na ko nakuha ang data i search ra psa.com uh, na atin dito tanan no total population in every barangay sa tibuok Pilipinas kung naaman late na sa late late location located inyong business so makita ra sa dito now let's say my business is bake shop wala na ko gi-appeal ang pinakagamay nga population which is the 10% age range niya is 13 to 17. I have here the I, the pie graph. Wala na ako gi-appeal. Kay ay tama pa man pud na sila. No? Wala pa man sila income or allowance. But pwede ra jud i-appeal tanan kung unsay naa sa pie graph. Uh, it, depends, it depends to your business man pud no? or it depends to you. Okay, i-supply na to ang first column. Na to na ibutang ang segment 1, segment 2. These are the age range. Segments nga... So, segment nga naa sa pie graph class is ikapira. Second, uh, second and... Second column is the population in that range. Out of the total population sa location of your business, let's say ako ang bake shop is located in Cebu City and the total population sa Cebu... Cebu City, example lang, is 17,000. So, segment 1, kay 35% man siya. 35% of 17,000 is 5,950. Actually, population in each segment is available, available na po na siya sa PSA. Uh, therefore, you have two options. Pwede mo mag-multiply using the corresponding percentage or mag-check na lang mo sa site. But here, mag-do the math lang ta. Segment 2, 25% uh, age range, 24 to 30. 27% of 17,000 is 4,590. Uh, segment 3 is 31 to 39 and that's 13% 13% of 17,000 is 2,210 2, and the last one is segment 4 for range the age is 40 to 50 has 15% and 15% of out of 17,000 the result is 2,550 now sa growth na part is it is the possible growth of your business in that certain location. Dili kay siya dako though daghan kay siya uh, size sa customer but daghan man sa kompetensya si observe tan uh, i-check man nimo kung pila ka book bake shop in Cebu City. So daghan ubay-ubay na ay Sofia na ay Julie's na ay Anita's. So um example na ko dili kay 6%, 4%, 2%. So magdepende gyapon na sa inyong location kung wala kayo may kompetensya niya, ingani kada ko nga size, di ba? So possibly siya 20 or 15% ang growth sa inyong business. Next column is the potential new entrants. These are your new competitor. Naabay pilay chance nga mo grabi, mo daghan pa ang imuhang or bag na apay mo open no, mo put up ang new business which is bake shop food in that certain location sa Cebu City. So for me, taas gud ang ang um, put ang possibility. Why? Basic needs man gud siya class, basta food no mga on baya gid ang tawo niya. Mura say madali kung gutom na kaayo baka makapalit, makabusog na baya ang singko nga pan. So, strong siya, especially sa 18 nga 23, kay mo man ay range sa mga sudyante, no? Kay kung 24 to 30, probably, kung ano man na sila, dili na na sila magmantinil o pano, na naman sila income. Kung baga, sa segment 1, more on allowance pa sila. Next column is the power of the buyer and power of the suppliers. This means the pressure nga mahatag ni, ni buyer or supplier in your business. Example, uh, bake shop. Since the purpose or goal na ako sa akong business is to provide a nutritious bread. And because of that, a bit expensive gid siya. Kaya na na may additional ingredient. Mahal naman gid na ang mahalun, mahal naman na ang ingredient if nutritious na imong food. Anya, rare sad ang supplier. So, for the part of supplier, a bit challenging siya. So, strong ang iyahang um, threat, no? 
in my business kay unsao na pag meet challenge na sa entrepreneur to meet the demand of the customer and for the supplier still strong gihapon it's because um, since rare raman ang business uh, bake shop nga ni offer og nutritious food especially sa Cebu City so that's why basta nihit pagani ang supplier walay kompetensya ang supplier makademand gid sila so here uh, strong gihapon ang ang force or ang threat Second to the last column is capability of the business, your business or my business. So, I have here, as you can see, low ang segment 1. Kay na foresee na na ako since ang akong purpose why ni put up ko make shop is healthy bread. And ang needs man good no, ang needs sa segment 1 is affordable. And this would kayo affordable nga akaayong good nga bread nga ma-offer na ako if healthy siya. Kay nana mo na additional ingredient ug mahal na pod ang ingredient para ang imuhang bread is healthy lang that's why low siya and then for the segment 2 high ang success rate why na naman ni sila kumbaga mo go na sila no for the healthy food kay conscious na sila sila ang diet no nga nanat na mo sexy unya maka afford na sad sila bisan expensive siya gamay no Ex kumbaga, kaya na naman sila income. So, hi! And for segment 3, possible stud siya, kay hilig naman magkapi ang mga adult, no? So, hi! Gihapon akong gibutang ang success rate sa ako ang business. Kay since, dili naman magsugod ang mga maintenance. So, dira na mag-start na sila og healthy living. And, uh, low for the segment 4, kay kaning Mm, rare raman kaayo po ni makasuroy no, do dag, muna ilang population niya, dili pagid na probably ang mag, laagan, masigig laag ba, magsigsuroy sa Colon or sa Cebu City, mugawa sa balay is naasa segment 1, 2, 2, 3, so that's why low akong um, success rate for the of my business for the last column we have priority of the segment now, you will decide based on the previous columns what will be your priority or uh, target customer. So, I have your segment 2 as number 1, number 2, segment 1, and 3, seg uh, number 3, and segment 4, number 4. The next part after consumer analysis is competitor analysis. The business must determine the intensity of competition within its industry environment since the level of intensity is primarily dependent on the competitive forces existing within the industry. The long-term survival of your business is measured by its successful efforts against competitive forces. And these are the five forces competing within the industry. It is already the revised model of Michael Porter. The first one is rivalry among existing firms, threat of potential new entrants, threat of substitute product, bargaining power of supplier, and bargaining power of the buyer. So the expected output in competitor analysis is competitive matrix. It is somewhat the same sa katong segmentation matrix, but here focus siya sa competitor. By the way, please check your ebook pages 106 to 107 for the detailed barriers or factors to the five forces of competition. Now, what is competitive matrix? We have here table. On the first column, we have the competing forces. Actually, we have five competing forces, but uh, in our output, I omitted potential new entrants and a threat of substitute products para less stress ang pagbuhat ninyo ani nga task. So again, competing forces class, these are considered threats in your business. The intensity of the threat of these competing forces is highly influenced by the level or degree of barriers 
to the forces. The more barriers against the force, the lesser the intensity of the threat of such force. Therefore, barriers to the force, these are factors that will help reduce you know, the threat of your business. On the third column is the effect of the barrier to the forces and the last column is the effect of the threats to the business. And these two are inversely proportional. So that means if the effect of the barrier to the force is high, therefore less ang threat no sa comp competing force sa in your business. If the effect of the barrier is low, therefore threat ang competing forces sa imuhang business. So opposite ang second, ang third ug ang fourth columns. Now let's have an example. In this competitive matrix, you need to identify specific competitor. Since bake shop man akong example gani ha, so this time this example is for Julie's bake shop. Competitive mark matrix for Julie's bake shop. Uh, on the first uh, the first competing force is bargaining power of buyers. Actually, sa e-book, naay mga available nga barriers or factors, but not all applicable. No, it depends. It depends on what kind of business you have, and mostly katong mga factors nga available sa e-book kay dagko na kaayo for dagko na kaayo nga company or na diligent all the time applicable sila. So this time, mga kung gi barrier or factors is various product available wherein dili ma pressure si di mag no di mag all si Julie's Bake Shop kay yahang mga close competitor just like San Jose or Sofia ma provide ra niya kung usay ma offer sa yahang close competitor ma offer sa niya so ang ang effect ani nga barrier since daghan man siyang ma offer nga bread is to the competing force is medium. Dili siya um, high. It's because in comparison sa sa akong bake shop nga focus sa healthy nga bread, wala may ma-provide si Julie's no, nga healthy nga bread. So, medium ra siya. Dili totally high. Okay, again, wala nutritious bread si Julie's nga available. Second competing force is bargaining power of suppliers. And uh, Barrier factor is actually general, siya, no? Various suppliers are available in the industry. So, therefore, dili ma pressure si Julie sa iyahang supplier anytime. If demanding si supplier, no, makapangita ragid siya o um, another supplier. So, effect of this barrier to the competing forces is high. That's why ang threat nga ma-provide ni supplier is low to the business. The third one is rivalry among existing firms. Barrier to this force is number of competing firms. And we know the effect of competition or the threat no, of competition to our business is high. Therefore, the effect, since inversely proportional man siya sa effect of the bar barrier, to this competing force, so the answer here is low. So always remember these two columns kai inversely proportional. And that ends our discussion for today. On Friday, I will post the discussion about marketing forecast, marketing position, and marketing strategy kay do tulo na lang ni ka part taas gihapon ni siya no kumbaga half gihapon ni sa 20 pages that's all thank you for listening